Bonds, born again in this second season and celebrating with two, two home run ball games to lead the Cubs near the top in the National East. You'll see them today. And this week, a week of managerial firings. Out is Gene Michael and is Bob Lemon of the Yankees and north of the border. Dick Williams is home in Florida. We'll talk to him. Jim Fanning at the control of the Expos. And while all that is going on, Yankee Stadium, the house that Ruth built, that Steinbrenner refinanced, or the taxpayers paid for. We'll find out as we prepare for Major League Baseball on NBC. NBC Sports presents Major League Baseball, an inside look at baseball and a preview of today's Game of the Week. Brought to you by Kemper and the independent insurance agents who represent us. For all of your insurance needs, ride with Kemper. And by Tegrin Shampoo, with the medication three out of four dermatologists judged effective in fighting problem dandruff. It's a beautiful day in Chicago and at Wrigley Field on this September 12th, the Cubs are in a pennant race. They're preparing to take on the Montreal Expos. Here at Yankee Stadium, the sun is high and so is the humidity. The Yankees are at home to renew an old rivalry with the Boston Red Sox. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another Saturday of Baseball on NBC. I'm Brian Gumbel. We've got two good ball games on tap, both featuring brand new managers. Jim Fanning heading out to the Expos today as Montreal goes against the Cubs in Chicago. Here the Red Sox are in to take on the Yankees. Yankees, now led by Bob Lemon. Indeed, it was the managerial firings this week that took center stage. Gene Michael on Sunday, ousted by George Steinbrenner. And the new boss of the Yankees is a man who's been here before. Bob Lemon comes in, this time for his second tour of duty. He knows what it's all about. He's won with this club. And yes, he says he has won with a man with whom he's had no problems. problems all the things you read about, I think it's never come about with uh, him or myself. And, uh, I mean, this is the only baseball club in the world. You know, they're, they're the Yankees. One managerial firing was followed by another. Dick Williams, after five years in Montreal, was ousted as head of the Montreal Expos, this after two second-place finishes. The man who takes over is the man who guided all the Expos' young talent in the farm system. He is Jim Fanning, who has headed up that farm system for years with the Expos, but going into today's game has an 0-3 record problems for Cesar Cedeno. He charged a fan in the stands in Atlanta after a fan called him killer, referring to an involuntary manslaughter conviction in the Dominican Republic. Cedeno's wife was seated near the fan. Cesar naturally took exception. He was fined $5,000 and suspended by Chubb Feeney, but that suspension was lifted yesterday due to unmitigated circumstances. California Angels outfielder has his own kind of problems. That's Dan Ford. He used an illegal bat in Cleveland. His bat came apart. It was stuffed with cork. They found him out. He got three days and, un and a of an undisclosed amount. Reggie Jackson, he always manages to find his name in the news. This week, while he continued his torrid hitting, he was brushed back a couple of times by Randy Lurch. None of the Yankee pitchers retaliated. Reggie took exception. It wasn't that big a blow-up. Ron Say had his problems, though. Watch this pitch from Tom Griffin. It exploded in on the hands. Original guesstimate was that Say would be out two to three weeks. Now it's been learned that Ron Say is out until the 1982 season. How's this fellow for a golden oldie? Johnny Bench, 34 years young and swinging a hot bat since coming back with, from a broken ankle. He's had four home runs. This one, number 362, surpassed Joe DiMaggio, 27th spot on the all-time list. And here's another golden oldie, Bobby Bonds. He's 35 years young. He was only four for 20 for the week, but all four were home runs, helping the clubs pull to within a game and a half in the National East. Those were the hot hitters. The hottest pitcher, well, it wasn't tough to determine. He was John Denny. He had a string of 34 and two-thirds scoreless innings before it was snapped by the Baltimore Orioles. And how's this for a piece of good news? Do you recognize this young man? His name is Travis John. He was in an accident August 3rd. He fell from a three-story window. He was in intensive care for quite a while. He has now been released from the hospital. Our prayers have been answered. Travis John has no lasting neurological damage, and we're all thankful for that. Managers, they're in and they're out. We're going to take a look at that when we come back. The change of managers here in New York got the most play, but there was a managerial change that was equally important in the National League. Out is Dick Williams. We'll talk to him in a moment. As head of the Expos, in is Jim Fanning. He's standing by in Chicago with our Tony Kubek. Tony? Hi, Brian. Jim, Dick Williams is considered one of the really brilliant baseball minds. What can you add to this ball club that he couldn't? I don't know what I can add uh, specifically, Tony. Uh, if I have an advantage, it might be that uh, 24 of these players have come through my hands, either uh, in their early stages of development or in case of some of the last players, the Wallachs and Francona's, I signed them, drafted them, and, and scouted them. 
So I, if I have a rapport or any kind of an advantage, it might be uh, for that reason. But I'd like to say one thing about Dick. Uh, I don't know that there's ever been a major league manager that I've ever been around who played the players that the farm system delivered like he did. Uh, when we told Dick that this guy is ready, or Gullickson, or Sanderson, or Palmer, or Charlie Lee, or Wallach, he said, that's good enough for me, and he played them. And I don't know that there's been another major league manager ever who has had that confidence in uh, those of us who run the farm system. Jim Fannier, thank you. Good luck the rest okay. of the year. Thank Hope you, you'll be back next okay. year. Brian? Okay, Tony, thank you very much. The man Jim Fanning replaced, of course, is Dick Williams. He's standing by at his home in Tampa. Dick, first let me ask you, getting dismissed from a major league job is nothing new to you, but were you surprised to be let go in Montreal? Well, at this time of the year, I, I was. I was hoping to finish the year, and I figured we had a win and still may not stay there. But uh, uh, I think the Expos figure this is the best thing to do at this time, and uh, I'm all for them. I wish them nothing but success. I enjoyed my five years at Montreal. The fans are outstanding. The front office, just great. John McHale and, and Jim Fanning and uh, Danny Menendez. It's an outstanding organization. Dick, there was a quote out of Montreal that said one of the reasons they made a change was because there was a lack of discipline on the club. That is a strange charge against a Dick Williams team. Well, I think with the demise of the reserve clause, uh, the biggest thing a manager has to do is worry that they get to the park on time, do their pregame work, and then the operation of the ball club. Evidently, the front office saw it differently, and... Uh, I mean, it's that their decision to make. I have no animosity whatsoever, and I wish them well. Dick, once before, George Steinbrenner tried to draft you to manage his Yankees. Um, do you foresee that as a possibility in your immediate future? I have not talked to anyone at all, Bryant, uh, nor has anyone contacted me. Uh, we'll just have to see what happens. I would like to stay on baseball if at all possible, but uh, and as you know, I did sign for three years one time a few years back with the Yankees, which was terminated by the lame duck president at that time, Joe Cronin. But uh, as of this uh, minute, I have not heard from anyone. If the position of the Yankees was offered to you, you would be receptive? I would have to listen, absolutely. One final question. Are you lowering your handicap? <laughs> I'm afraid not. My son took me for, uh, uh, for a few skins yesterday. And uh, one good thing about being home at this time of the year, I did get to meet my future daughter-in-law from Calgary, Alberta, Sue Podgurney. She's down here with my son. Okay. And uh, this was one good thing. Thank you, Dick. Thanks very much. I know you didn't like the, second, the split season anyway. Okay, hello and goodbye. It is musical chairs when it comes to managers. I'm sure this is not what the Beatles had in mind when they wrote it, but the song fits. Baseball's debates are of the on-field variety. Sometimes it's the cost of baseball. Pete Axel looks at that when we come back following this message. The experts and fans alike consider it the most respected football show on the air today. For humor, for controversy, for an inside look, join host Brian Gumbel for all the latest scores, highlights, and more. NFL 81. It's as hard-hitting as the sport it covers. Yankee Stadium, it's the crown jewel of baseball's playing fields. It's the house that Ruth built, Ruth built, but in 1976 it needed refurbishing and the cost kept escalating until it wound up costing five times as much as it originally did. The Yankees in the city are still haggling about the price. In ancient Rome, I hear they built the Colosseum with taxes from the local brothels. In modern New Jersey, I know they built the sports complex with taxes from the horse players at the Meadowlands. 
You can say what you want about those priorities. The Yankees spared us that debate. They renovate Yankee Stadium with the city's money. $24 million to start, ended up close to 100 Some complained that the Yankees got a sweetheart deal while the city was going broke. Today, people still wonder if the team is paying its fair share. Last year, the stadium grossed $21 million. According to the lease, New York should get a chunk of this to pay its stadium building debt. But the Yankees are entitled to deduct maintenance costs from the rent. This clause leaves room for dispute, almost $700,000 worth. This is a big business. It's like other big businesses I have. And you will have, often you will have uh, discrepancies or things that have to go to arbitration or be arbitrated by an impartial person to, to tell you what, which uh, way you go. All labor has it today, and we have that with the city right now. Does it mean that the city should pay $338,000 for operation of a scoreboard? That's the biggest single item in dispute. But another interesting question is should the taxpayers of New York, even the non-Yankee fans, foot the bill for a liability insurance policy that was recently hiked from 10 to 100 million after cracks appeared in the stadium structure? In the area having to do with the disputes uh, about the investigation of the structural problems, the Yankees deducted uh, the increase uh, pre the premiums for the increased liability insurance from their from their rent. Uh, I believe it's better to be safe than sorry, and and the reason that we took it out is we all, we felt all along, number one, that we were maybe a little below where we should have been in the level of with these days of liability uh, and uh, insurance needs where we should have been, and and we just chose to increase it and to keep it up there. It wasn't because we were really afraid of any danger or anything was going to happen. So you asked me once whether. Uh, if it was put to a vote whether New Yorkers would rather have Dave Winfield in left field, Reggie in right field, or and getting the salaries they get, or would rather have the city get another half a million dollars more a year? Well, I think we all know the answer. When, if ever, will this stadium really make money for the city? When you throw in all the pluses and minuses, the cost of rebuilding the stadium, uh, the debt service and the cost of rebuilding the stadium, the cost of building the garages and the parking lots and the, and the new highways, uh, then uh, the calculation might prove to be a negative calculation. New York's negative calculations matter to people wherever there's a publicly built stadium. Because whether your local minus pool is filled by old-time brothels or modern budget cuts, you're one of the sponsors of your own town's modern coliseum. We spoke to a person from the Department of Parks yesterday. It seems the Yankees and the city of New York are now very, very close to an agreement, but things have been at a standstill for the last few weeks while the lawyers argue over the legal language of the agreement. In any event, Yankee Stadium in here, and we've got baseball to come, the Red Sox and the Yankees, the Cubs and the Expos. The executive producer of NBC Sports is Don Olmeyer. Today's pregame show was produced by David Stern and directed by Andy Rosenberg. Our technical director was Skip Drash. Features producers Les Dennis and Antoinette Machiaverna. Our associate director, John Labretto. Coming up next is the Expos and the Cubs. Bonson versus Kravik, the Red Sox and the Yankees. Ojeda goes against Russell. I'm Bryant Gumbel. Thanks so very much for joining us in the pregame show. Now, stay tuned for baseball coming up right here on NBC. See Barbara Mandrell, Country Music's Entertainer of the Year and the Mandrell Sisters. Then Marie Osmond is back with special guest stars Bob Hope and Nell Carter. And who will be the next Miss America? Ron Ely hosts live from Atlantic City. It's a beautiful night of entertainment, Saturday on NBC. Sports presents Major League Baseball Game of the Week. Today from Yankee Stadium, it's the Boston Red Sox versus the New York Yankees. The Game of the Week is brought to you by the Miller Brewing Company, Brewers of Miller Highlight. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. By Ford and your Ford dealer who invite you to test drive the EXP, America's new personal sports coupe. By Head & Shoulders Regular and Conditioning Formula for extra manageability. And by Ding Bong Boots, the walking boots. All right. This is Yankee Stadium in New York, where names like Jimmy Fox, Joe Cronin, Ted Williams, Carl Yastrzemski, Babe Ruth, Joe DiMaggio, Lou Gehrig, and Mickey Mantle participated in one of baseball's great rivalries. The Boston Red Sox against the New York Yankees, and they're at it again today. 
Hi, I'm Merle Harmon with Ron Luciano. Ron, I was talking about some pretty heavy hitters, but really the Red Sox have only one genuine power plant left, and that would be Jim Rice. Yeah, they've got a lot of old ball players too, led by Kari Ostremski. 42 years old. Every time he walks on the field, sets another record. They got a lot of young ball players. Bob Ojeda, 24 years old, pitcher today, and the organization can't believe the man has improved that much in only one year of Major League ball. But their older ball players are getting a lot older, and the younger ball players are getting a lot older very fast. But the story today, Boston, the rivalry with New York. And no matter what we see today, you know Boston's going to give that little extra because of the rivalry. Red Sox manager Ralph Hawk is hoping the Red Sox will wind up in the playoffs. We know the Yankees are going to be there because they won the first half. They're now playing under Bob Lemon for the second time. In 1978, he took over the Yankees from Billy Martin and led them to a World Series championship over the Los Angeles Dodgers. Lim is back, and for the time, everything is cool in New York, as they would say. Cool with Reggie Jackson, too. No, hot with Reggie Jackson. He's arrived a little early. He's been carrying a hot bat. Mr. October is having quite a September. The Yankees need that power. They've got the pitching. They've got the best pitching staff in the league, ERA-wise, are under three. And the bullpen with Ron Davis and Goose Gossage, need I say more. But as Ronnie says, it's the rivalry. The Red Sox and the Yankees. And we'll be back with the lineups right after this. The preceding message was furnished by Major League Baseball. I'm Rick Cerrone of the New York Yankees. Today's Boston lineup that Rick Ruschel will be facing features Jerry Remy leading off playing second base. Our job is to keep him off the bases because he's got lots of speed. Batting second, Dewey Evans playing right field. A lot of power having a great year for him. Batting third, Jim Rice in left field. We just try to keep him in the ballpark, try to stop him from hitting home runs against us. Batting fourth, the old man Carl Yastrzemski, designated hitter. Still a great player, and, and we're very weary of him. Batting fifth, the, probably their hottest hitter, Carney Langs, for playing third base. We're not going to let him beat us today. Batting sixth, Dave Stapleton playing first base. A good all-around ball player playing first base today. Batting seventh, a new guy, Rich Geldman, up for Rookie of the Year honors, a good catcher. Batting eighth, not Glenn Miller, Rick Miller, playing center field, a good contact hitter, opposite field hitter, same thing, keep him off the bases. Batting ninth, Glenn Hoffman, the shortstop, another good contact hitter, and pitching for Boston will be Bob Ojeda. Stay tuned. <laughs> All right, Rick, thank you very much. And Cerrone is out of the lineup today with a bruised left hand. More about that later. Right now, Ronnie, the defense for the Yankees. Defensively, as you can see, we got Worth in left field, Mumphrey in center, Jackson in right. Bob Watson at first, Woody Ra Willie Randolph at second, Andre Robertson at shortstop, Nettles at third, foot behind the plate, and Rick Russell on the mound. And Rick looks like he's overweight. He's a sinker ball pitcher. And what he does best is he looks like he's bad at throwing batting practice all the time. He doesn't look like he's throwing good at all. But what happens, you get into the seventh inning, he's still there, and he's usually ahead. He amazes people because his sinker ball really sinks. You know, you said it looked like Rick uh, is overweight. He, that's his playing weight. But in the pinstripes, it helps a little bit. You should have remembered him in that <laughs> Chicago Cubs uniform. He really looked like he was out there. But he's a farm boy out of the Quincy, Illinois area, and he played uh, Little League Baseball in Keokuk, Iowa. And he has, a pitch, has pitched exceedingly well for New York. This is his seventh appearance. He was traded to the Yankees on the eve of the player strike June 11th. And so he had to wait a long time to make his first start for New York. And he is now facing Jerry Remy as we get it underway. Also missing from the Yankee lineup today, of course, is Bucky Dent. And Bucky's going to be joining us in about the fourth inning here in the booth. So it's a strike to Remy, and here we go. Jerry hitting at 327, one of the top five hitters in the American League. Bluffed the butt, and it's a ball and a strike to Remy. The Red Sox are in fifth place in the American League East, three and a half games back. The Yankees are tied for second, but the Yankees are, all, are already in the playoff picture, as we have mentioned. Willie Randolph on to Watson. Remy has gone one away. Bob 
Watson, former Boston Red Sox first baseman, played a year there, declared his free agency and joined the Yankees. Now Dwight Evans, talk about a guy having an outstanding year. There are some of his statistics. He's cooled off a little bit because he's been putting more pressure on himself, Ron, trying to carry the club here in the second half of the season. They don't have the big home run hitters, and he thinks that he's supposed to hit home runs now, and he's not supposed to do that. He's way up there. He's got 16 home runs for the year. He's way up there. His job, get on base, hit that ball back through the middle. When he tries to pull it, he's in trouble, and that's what happened. He went into a slump. He tried to pull it. He has not had the patience in this second half. I guess that's the best way to put it. Two balls, a strike to Dwight Evans. One out, nobody on top of the first inning. Ted Williams saw him and, and for years in spring training camp said, that's the best man on this roster. That guy should break every record. He is terrific. Tony, Tony Kubek saw him in spring training this year. Look at that back foot, how deep he is in the box. Tony Kubek saw him in spring training this year and he said, this is the year for Evans. Tony has to be the, he should be manager. <laughs> well, he might be a candidate here in New York. That's Roberts and the rookie on to Watson, two down. Gray Robertson replacing the injured Bucky Dent and Bucky has the right hand in the cast and we'll take a look at it when he joins us here at about the fourth inning. Robertson an outstanding prospect and I'll tell you who likes him Charlie Lau. He thinks he not only uh, can handle his job in the field but he thinks he's going to swing a pretty good bat. No, not power but he's going to get on a lot hit 280 290. This is Jim Rice strike one. We'll watch Andre but I think Andre swings at too many pitches. I don't think he's patient enough. Maybe he'll learn with time. Of course, Charlie Lowe knows more than I do. And it's a ball and a strike to Rice. One thing about Rice, as you check out his statistics for the year, 13 homers, 49 RBIs, even in a short season, that really doesn't sound like a, a Jim Rice year, but he just does not have the cast of characters around him anymore that he had when Lynn was uh, in Boston, Fisk was there, and of course, Yaz was two years younger. Yeah, the thing about Rice, oh, what a pitch! Fooled him completely. He backed away, thought that ball was going to be way inside, a breaking ball. I didn't know Rick had that good a breaking pitch. Indeed he has, and it's a dandy. It fooled him completely. Here it comes. Watch him back out of the way. He thinks it's going to be inside. It isn't. So at the end of the first half inning, we've got nothing to nothing. Next Saturday, rejoin the family as the tough Pittsburgh Pirates battle home run king Mike Schmidt and the Philadelphia Phillies. Or Reggie Jackson snaps out of it in style when the New York Yankees take on the Boston Red Sox. Check local listings. Hi, this is Jerry Remy of the Boston Red Sox, and this is the lineup we'll be facing today for the New York Yankees. Leading off and playing second base, one of the finest second basemen in the game, Willie Randolph. Jerry Mumphrey will be in center field. Lou Pinello will be the designated hitter. Reggie Jackson, who of course is always dangerous, will be in right field. The bull, Bob Watson, will be at first base. Greg Nettles, who's made some tremendous plays at third base, will, will be playing third base today. Barry Foote will be the catcher. Dennis Worth will be in left field. And Andre Robinson will be the shortstop today. The pitcher will be Rick Russell. And when Jerry Remy compliments Willie Randolph as being one of the fine second basemen, he can put himself in that same category. Yes, he can. That, the two of them. They're both up there as the great ones in the league. Pitching today, Bob Ojeda. What a story this kid is. He gained 20 pounds over the winter. His best pitch is a changeup. And last year, they waited for it. This year, with the 20 pounds, he's got more beef behind his fastball. And when he throws that fastball, they can't wait for the changeup. He strikes him out with the changeup, throws it any time. And watch for that pretty changeup, and it's going to fool the batters, just like... Russell fooled twice last inning. And Ralph Hawk, who one time managed these same Yankees, but is now on the third base dugout as a manager of Boston, really likes Ojeda. In fact, he likes his young pitchers not only with the Red Sox now, but also in the Red Sox farm system. And I don't think it's any secret that the Red Sox personality is going to change over the next year or so, as Willie Randolph leads it off for the New York Yankees, hitting a 232 for the year. Last year, Willie hit 294. And Bob Ojeda, who has won four and lost two, is ready to let it go for the Boston Red Sox. Just 
Right one. He has good breaking stuff. He's got a good fastball. His fastball is clocked at about 86, 87 miles an hour, so he is not overpowering, but he is consistent with the speed. Good breaking ball. How about that one? Remy down for the play and one away. Jerry Remy, injury free this year. Last two seasons, Jerry very tough for this man, and he is part of the heart of this Boston ball club now. The key to the infield since Burleson has departed to California. Jerry Mumphrey having a fine year for New York. Switch hitter. Came from San Diego, where he also had a good year last season. Good breaking stuff for Mojita. The report is that Mumphrey either has or is about to sign a new contract with the Yankees worth a bundle. How many million? Something like five million for six years. Nothing in two. Yeah, but the play he's played for New York, he's worth it. He's put more dimension as a center fielder than they've had in a long time. Now he switch hits. They didn't have that. Uh, he's got good speed in the outfield. They had that before. He's also got a speculative arm. We're not too sure about that. But he steals bases. They haven't had a center fielder steal bases since Mantle. Reggie Jackson thinks that he has had, well, in fact, he's been the most consistent Yankee, according to uh, Reggie. Screwball. He turned it over. This kid. Got he a lot does of everything in. except catch the ball. Does everything well, <laughs> except when the catcher throws it back to him, he drops it. You know, Reggie talking about Mumphrey being consistent. That he has. He's done his job quietly. But as you mentioned, Ron, the arm is suspect, and most ball clubs are going to run on him. Load inside. Three balls, two strikes. Here's a big good spot for that changeup now. He's a little mad. He wanted that pitch. He wanted it right. He tried to be too fine with it. Let's see if he comes with that changeup. One out, no score, bottom of the first. Breaking ball, and he fouled it away. Well, let's see. We've got we got Bucky Dent out of the lineup today for New York. He'll be joining us later on. Rick Cerrone has a bruised hand, but Bryant Gumbel was here to play. He's got a bruised <laughs> forearm from a ball game yesterday in Central Park. But you saw him today on the pregame show. Absolutely. That left arm is skinned from the elbow to the wrist, but he's a gamer, isn't he? Oh, he's beautiful talk to Bucky and he's telling them about his injury. Bucky's missing probably the, the playoffs and the series besides the rest of the year and Brian's telling him about his injury. Some kind of nerve by Gumble. Uh, we took care of him pretty good I guess. He just departed. Three balls, two strikes, one out. Jerry Mumphrey from Tyler, Texas. 29 years old last Monday. This is Bob Ojeda who's 24 years old. There's that change up. He took something off in that. And you saw Jerry was just completely off stride. Watch, perfect motion. You think it's a fastball. He's got perfect delivery. Everything's coming except, whoop. Perfect, perfect. Bob Ojeda from Los Angeles, California, and Visalia, California. Ojeda, when I first saw him with a J in there, I thought he would be Oriental. I really did, but no. <laughs> and when I saw him, I said, you're Bob? He said, yes, what's the matter? Look at He's Spanish descent. Two down, nobody on. Lou Pinella at the plate. Strike one. You made a mistake with Pinella one time, too, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> that was beautiful. There he There's is. There's Jax. Reggie Jax. Boy, he is so good. Yeah, Lou, one time he came up and I said to him in Italian, I said, hi, Lou, how you doing? He said, what are you talking about? Man? Well, don't you understand your native language? He said, I understand my native language, but not yours. I said, well, <laughs> what are you? And he said, I'm Spanish. I said, strike three. <laughs> Foul ball. You said strike three before the pitcher. <laughs> before <after> anything. <laughs> he laughed for five minutes. Two down, nobody on to the Yankee half of the first inning here at Yankee Stadium in New York. Bob Ojeda, last year at Pawtucket, and Boston convinced the Red Sox that he was no more than another year away in the minor leagues, and he didn't even spend that much time in the minors. That 20 pounds really helped him. He says he feels so much stronger. He said, maybe I'm not, but I really feel it. Just missed with a breaking ball. 
You know, Ojeda had been, uh, in fact, the, uh, the Red Sox were going to call him up prior to the strike, but the Red Sox were on the coast, so they made the decision, well, we'll wait until we get home. The strike hit while they were on the road, and Ojeda stayed at Pawtucket where he was able to pitch, and it really helped him. There's the screwball. Two balls, two strikes to Pinello. But Ralph Houck, we were talking earlier about the change in the personality of the Red Sox. They've always been known as a power club. And he said, uh, we're going to be uh, have a little different look in the next year or so. We'll have better pitching, better defense, three and two, better defense. We'll play a little tighter. And we'll have one or two people maybe that can pop that long ball. But he said, I really feel good about the future of the Red Sox. I don't. I disagree with Ralph completely. When you've got Fenway Park, which is a hitter's ballpark, you don't get pitching in defense. You play for the big long ball in the big 10 innings. The big 10 runs in one inning. The fastball riding away from Pella. And so Louie is on with the base on balls. So Reggie Jackson, the man who always creates a reaction when he even steps out of the dugout is up. We talked about him being Mr. September in place of October this year, and of course October is still to come. Yeah, he's so happy now because look at the smile. He knows October is, is close and he's going to do super. He has upped his batting average 42 points since the strike. Two down, one on. Big breaking ball for a strike. If you ask Reggie, is he near the end of the line because his contract with the Yankees is up this year and there's some question that he will sign again with New York, he says, oh, no, 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 I've got some time left. And yet you ask other people and they say, he's suspect. Nothing in two. Watch this swing. It's a power swing. It always has been. Perfect stride. He had the weight distributed right in the middle where it should be. He just missed the pitch again. Change up. And you're, he throws you just a little off. But he's right back into midseason form with the weight, Charlie Lau style, right in the middle of your body when you're in the middle of your swing. No balls, two strikes. Ojeda to Jackson. Missed with the breaking stuff. Reggie, uh, George Steinbrenner ordered a physical for Jackson here a few weeks ago, and since that time, he's been hammering the ball. In fact, he's had three game-winning RBIs since then, and I understand now the entire Yankee ball club will have a physical on <laughs> the 16th of September. He figures if the physicals work, you use them, huh? Got it. So two strikeouts for Bob Ojeda, and the walk doesn't hurt him, and Jackson is gone, and so are the Yankees, and we played one at Yankee Stadium in New York. The Red Sox nothing, and after this strikeout, the Yankees nothing. And we'll be back after this. That's Yogi Berra on the phone of the Yankee dugout. You don't, see, I don't see Lemon. You suppose uh, Yogi's been named manager or something? He's, on the phone. <laughs> He's talking on the phone. Who's he talking to? Steinbrenner. <laughs> Where yeah, is Lemon? I don't know. That's Rick Rushel. <laughs> you know that. <laughs> and leading off for Boston, Yaz, DHing it today. Goes to prove you need a pitcher and a batter, you don't need a manager. 255, six homers and 42 runs batted in. One ball and a strike. Carl was 42 years old August 22nd, his 21st year in the biggies. Off speed stuff from Marshall, one ball, two strikes. He has pulled a leg muscle about 10 days ago, and he really hasn't been running very well, so he's been DHing it. That's what he has done in the second half of the season. He's always been a great starter, and it's been lucky for him. Two starts this season. Got the inside corner as Russell nailed it down. Again, not overpowering. He thinks the ball was inside, but not overpowering. It wasn't a blazing Gossage fastball or a Ryan fastball that went by him. Just cute enough and sharp enough to get a strike three. And you know what? E either Carl was guessing different location, and he's not really that much of a guess hitter, although he's unhappy with the call, but I think uh, Rick gave him a location that he wasn't looking for. Yeah. You you're not going to fool him on the pitch. No, you don't usually come inside to Carl with two strikes. You try to go away from him because he pulls that ball so well. Russell missing the inside corner to Carney Lansford. 
24 year old third baseman from San Jose California what a year he's had short season or no short season foul ball Lansford came from the California Angels along with Mark Clear who's out of that bullpen for Boston today and Rick Miller for Burleson and Hobson in a winter deal as we look at the batting leaders and we see Mr. Lansford up there in the number three spot and Jerry Remy the fifth top hitter in the American League. Now that's where you expect to see Boston up there among the hitting leaders. That was a foul tip. <laughs> There's nothing I suppose that <laughs> disgusts a batter more than for you know to just get a little bitty tick of the ball. Uh, and what an umpire does he hears it and so he goes up and he says I heard it <laughs> and Carney probably said I know you didn't see it you can't see that for sure. Oh, oh he oh, saw that one. Mumphrey lots and lots of room it's 430 feet out there two down that's sad that you hit a ball that far and you don't get anything except a time at bat at it Number 11. you know they talk about Mumphrey uh, not being an outstanding center fielder but I think he gets a good jump on the ball His speed makes up for a lot of faults well not but but he also I think he is he has learned the hitters very very quickly in the American League he's in fact he even cheats a little bit on uh, some of them yeah but uh, you can't give him all the credit you got to give Yogi the credit and Bucky today uh, I don't know who's taking over for Bucky Bucky's been doing the last few days they place the outfielders and the infielders on every pitch Dave Stapleton playing at first base today the man that plays everywhere big ballpark two balls no strikes in fact Ralph Hawk says that uh, Stapleton with this kind of a target to shoot at and this is okay for Dave he's not a home run hitter oh isn't he how about this one and it is gone <laughs> <laughs> all right Mr. Stapleton uh, you can't trust ball players as soon as you say something about it they do the opposite he's not a home run hitter and he just powered that ball so it's a one to nothing Boston lead and Russell <laughs> is saying now wait a minute I pitched you to hit the ball away and you didn't do it he heard the same thing you did he's not a home run hitter so Russell came with a ball that did not sink see how it stayed up there oh what a play by Willie that was the catch of Gedman and Willie Randolph went he looked like a basketball player with that leap went high in the air stabbed it and we've got a one to nothing ball game. So the home run, the long home run by Stapleton, one to nothing Boston. The Yankees will come to bat in the bottom of the second. Bob Watson will lead off for New York. I get all kinds in here. Some like it straight, some with a twist, but they all want the best disposable razor. If they like it straight, it's Gillette's Good News Razor, the Twin Blade Classic. If they like it with a twist, it's Gillette Swivel Razor, twin blades plus a moving head that hugs your face. Both shave better than any single blade disposable. Good news or swivel, Gillette puts two great shaves at your disposal. So what'll it be, straight or with a twist? You don't need a haircut, Jim. You need Brill Cream. Brill Cream? Sure. Your hair is short enough, but it's a mess. It sure is. Brill Cream's so concentrated, just a little dab keeps hair healthy looking and in control all day. Look. I'll put a little dab of Brill Cream here. Nothing here. See? Even with the hair blower, the Brill Cream side doesn't fly around. Without Brill Cream, hair flies around. Terrific. You're right. With Brill Cream, a little dab will do you. Come on, guys. I'm all fished out. Besides, it's just about Miller time. It's about that time. It's about that time. I'm going back. Sun's about to set. Tomorrow, Earl Campbell proves he's no stiff, but don't underestimate this man, Brian Syke. He can hit the end zone all day. Houston versus Cleveland, what a battle. Or the New England Patriots try to ground the NFC champion Philadelphia Eagles. Check local listings. Bob Lemon is back in the dugout, has been rehired as manager of the New York Yankees after one inning. I don't know where Bob was. That's Charlie Law, who's seated uh, to his left, to your right. 
You know, one of the things about Charlie Lau, he's acknowledged as probably the outstanding hitting coach of the major leagues. And I've often wondered why some club hasn't hired Charlie Lau as a manager. And we'll have a, another comment on that in a moment as Bob Watson leads off for New York. But, you know, Ron, I'm wondering if if Lau has not become stereotyped like George Bamberger had at Baltimore. Everybody thought of him only as a pitching coach. And here's Charlie Lau acknowledged as one of the outstanding authorities on hitting. And yet he hasn't managed, but uh, maybe he's got the, maybe it's the same thing with Lex, with uh, Bamberger. We asked Bambi, why didn't you manage before? He said, nobody asked me. That's one of the reasons. The other reason, he said, I believe in the Peter principle. And that is you should go as high as you're physically able to go and no higher because when you go higher than that you become uh, not as good as you were before and he says i am a great batting coach he yeah. said i might be a lousy manager no nah, i don't he think said, so I, I don't i don't think i want to do all those other things i'm too good doing this bob watson fouls one away two balls and two strikes we mentioned a rivalry he wants to beat this boston club so bad I talked to him before, and I said, hey, how do you feel today? He said, Boston, what do you think how I feel? Mm, it is one to nothing as the Yankees are batting here, and Watson nails one deep to center. Rick Miller, one out. Talk about a guy that can cover the ground. Unheralded. Rick Miller is one of the fine defensive outfielders in the league. A few people around the league have said he slowed up. In the games that I've seen him, I don't believe it. He has not slowed up as far as I'm concerned. I don't agree with that at all, that he has slowed up. Well, he's only 33. He can go get him. One out. Greg Nettles hitting a 239. Is that a hot bat? Strike one. 14 home runs, 31 runs batted in for Nettles who is one of the all-time Yankee home run hitters. Sixth, pretty good company, too. Who has the most home runs in the new Yankee Stadium? Strike to the outside corner, Ojeda with a good breaking ball, nothing in two. What are you doing, playing trivia with me? You know who? Right there, Craig Nettles. Everybody thinks Reggie Jackson, but it's Craig Nettles that leads in the home runs in the new Yankee Stadium. Two strike pitch from Ojeda, side wheeled him and he fouled it away. He is the all time home run leader for third baseman with 281. Talking about being uh, sixth in the Yankee list of home run hitters. Of course, from one to one, two, six, it would be Babe Ruth, Mickey Mantle, Lou Gehrig, Joe DiMaggio, and Yogi Berra. And then Mr. Nettles. Boy, that's nice company to be in. On a home run by Stapleton, Boston leads one to nothing. Good breaking pitch, but he just missed with it. Gedman wanted that pitch way outside. He lined up to about six to eight inches outside, and Ojeda hit the glove perfectly. Craig had no part of it, though. There he is again. You see, he wants the outside corner against him. Two balls, two strikes. Do you see any resemblance in his delivery at all with uh, Valenzuela? Uh, no, I think he hides the ball a lot better than Venezuela does. Oh, he does. He's very tough. I stood behind there to watch him warm up, uh, behind the catcher watching him warm up. And he would drive me crazy if I was a hitter. And when I was uh, umpiring, he would drive me crazy. His delivery, he hides the ball, and you can't pick it up till it's out of his arm. What you like to do is to pick the ball up coming out of his hand. And if you can't do that, you're just a little off stride. That's another reason that makes that uh, change of pace so good. Three and two coming up to Greg Nettles. With one out of the Yankee second, Boston one, New York nothing. Merle Harmon and Ron Luciano with you at Yankee Stadium. Beautiful day for baseball. Temperature in the high 80s. Bob Ojeda. Fouled it away. We'll do it again. Okay, now watch how he gives you the right side of his body. And you can see the right side, but you can't see that left arm. It's hidden behind his whole body. Then all of a sudden it comes out. And by that time, it's too late. Your eyes aren't that quick that they can adjust. And he hides that ball beautifully. Right there he hit it. Whoa, he hit it beautiful. He fooled Nettles on that pitch. He jumped on 
him with a fastball and ripped it over the outside corner. Again, Nettles is probably looking for the off-speed pitch, and he hit the ball so well, he just flipped, flipped it right by him, and Nettles says, oh, no, darn it. I know it's on the outside corner, but I wish he wouldn't call it. So Ojeda has knocked off Watson and Nettles and now faces Barry Foote, the catcher. Off-speed breaking ball, little low. Foot filling in today for Rick Saron, who's got a bruised left hand. Back of the hand, he says. He said he, he heard it swinging, and then he re-injured it in Kansas City. One of the Kansas City ball players came around with the back of the bat, hit it on the back of his hand. But I told him it's hurt from Gossage. <laughs> when Gossage shows that ball, it not only hurts the front of your hand, it hurts all the way through to the back. Ojeda tried to back one up, but he missed outside with it. Ball two, strike one. Red Sox one, Yankees nothing. You saw Ojeda just a second ago shake his head no. This ball's in play. Miller's going to catch it in center field. So Rick Miller is out there again. Three up and three down for New York. And we played two innings. And on the home run by Dave Stable and the Red Sox lead by a score of one to nothing. We'll be right back after these messages from your local station. Potts faces a vicious gang leader in a dramatic martial arts showdown on chips. Then, David Jansen in the most dangerous rescue movie ever made. High Ice Sunday. Once you set foot on the Bodie Plantation, you best set your mind to working. The Bodie Plantation was one of the largest cotton plantations in the country. Today on this very site is a United Negro College Fund member school, producing graduates who become doctors, lawyers, and chemists. And your contributions make theirs possible. Saks Fifth Avenue, now open at Oak Brook Center. Oak Brook Center, now the first and last word in fashion. Someday soon, you could very well have the best of everything. But you will have to begin somewhere. And the best place to begin is with the very best beer in the world. The best tasting beer wherever you go. When you think about it, why would you ever have anything else? Come to think of it, I'll have a Heineken. Levi's jeans for guys that run with the fashion. Moving on jeans, style stretch for miles. Miles of moving on styles. Moving on jeans for guys with the fashion. Levi's moving on. Bob Newhart's back September 14th at 3:30 on Channel 5. The Red Sox come to bat at the top of the third inning at Yankee Stadium in New York with a one to nothing lead in the home run by Dave Stapleton. Rick Russell is on the hill for the Yankees, having won three, lost one since coming over to New York from the Chicago Cubs. And he will be facing Rick Miller. Rick's hit a solid 300 this year. Strike one with the breaking stuff. Rick has had a great year but he's playing in Fred Lynn's footsteps and nobody will accept him. Well, he has gone about his job in a very workmanlike fashion, hasn't made a lot of noise. This is his second tour of duty with the Red Sox. What and one to Miller. He's always wanted to hit 300, never has, and maybe this will be the, the year that he will. In fact, Ralph Houck says, he said, this guy's really underrated. He, you know, he doesn't make a lot of headlines, but he just does the job day in, day out. Robertson taking a base hit a bit away. Well, Andre showing you the range. That's the book on him. Got great range. This telecast is presented by authority of Major League Baseball and is intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of Major League Baseball is prohibited. Glenn Hoffman, number nine hitter in the order. Strike one. Talk about shoes to be filled. Hoffman became the Boston shortstop when Burleson was dealt away to the California Angels. 
off speed stuff hanging ball two strike one Robertson can he get him yes I'll tell you one thing if the numbers weren't different I think it was Bucky Dent and you know that's a hard act to follow Bucky Dent it's like following Frank Sinatra in a concert you can't do it he did everything perfect went deep into the hole set himself knew he had time and threw a perfect strike look at he's gonna buy three steps Hoffman's not that slow Jerry Remy for the second time. Tough sunfield in left field for Dennis Worth, but he has no trouble with it. And it's a quick three up, three down for the Boston Red Sox in the third. Dennis Worth, who plays everywhere, catch first base outfield and plucked that sun and made the play. After two and a half, Boston won, New York nothing. There has been one hit in the ball game, and that one hit belongs to Dave Stapleton. And he planted it in the left field seats, and it's one to nothing Boston here at Yankee Stadium. The house that Ruth built. You know what used to be here? In this spot? Yeah. In New York? No. Former estate of William Waldorf Astor. Oh, really? The Astor family. Dennis Worth, talking about a guy that can do everything for you. Yeah, don't believe that statistic you just read. Batting, hitting, .087. That's what he's hitting, but that's not what Dennis is worth. He, Dennis is going to be a lot better hitter than that shows. I didn't say Playing Dennis is worth, did I? Again, huh? yes. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Ojeda with a one to nothing lead. Strike one with a He's fastball. He's happier now. I said before, he shook his head last inning. And the reason he was shaking his head, he was behind, uh, let's see, he faced seven batters. He was behind on five of them. And he does not like to get behind. That's not his strategy. See, two pitches. Now you won't see him shaking his head. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. WMAQ-TV, Chicago. Merle Harmon and Ron Luciano with you at Yankee Stadium, New York. Boston won to nothing in the home run by Stapleton. And Worth takes a good strike down around the knees. Three. Bucky Dent will be joining us uh, next inning, by the way. Three pitches and three strikes. Now, that's what... I Bob's likes to do. See, he's got a little ha a little smile on his face now. You won't see any no, no, no. Andre Robertson. Talking about Andre a little while ago and the hopes that Charlie Lau has for him as a hitter. He thinks he's going to be okay. Strike one. He I don't keeps know. playing like he did uh, an inning ago. Bucky's going to have that cast off in a hurry and be <laughs> back out there, you know? Uh, no balls to strike. I don't know if he can hit that well. I'm very suspect when you hear the guy's got a good glove. That usually what means, does that mean? That usually means he can't hit. You know, it's, it's like when a girl has a great personality. Uh-oh. I hate to hear what's coming now. <laughs> I'm not even going to finish that one. But, you know, like, they talk about, oh, the guy's got a good stick. Usually means he, he's pretty bad in the outfield. Off-speed breaking ball. So five strikeouts already for Bob Ojeda. Good motion. Getting back to other, when they talk about the scouts, they great potential. That means the guy's doing nothing, absolutely nothing. He You're says, oh, I'd love to listen to these things and read them by the scouting reports. You're mean today. You oh, know? he knows how to play the hitter. You said that earlier with Mumphrey. Knows how to play the hitter. Usually means get a bad arm. <laughs> Willie Randolph, ball one, low and outside. Uh, catcher's got a lively arm. What's that mean? I don't know. No control. Throws the ball to center field each time. <laughs> the guy's trying to steal. The pitchers like him. That's what they say about Gedman. The pitchers like him. Bad catcher. Stiff hands. You're tough today. Oh. Randolph hitting at 232 coming into the game. That's Huffman on to Stapleton. One, two, three, Ojeda. And it's nothing across. And after three, the Red Sox lead one to nothing. But let's go back a few years. Bucky Dent against the Boston Red Sox at Fenway for the title, or rather for the 
chance to go to the World Series. And we'll be talking to Bucky about that when we come back right after this. Bucky Dent has joined us now in the booth here at Yankee Stadium in New York as we get underway here in the top of the fourth inning. Dwight Evans leading off for Boston. One to nothing Red Sox with a home run by Stapleton coming in the second. Evans grounded out in the third. Bucks, nice to have you with us. It's good to be here. I'd rather be on the field, but it's always <laughs> nice to be up here. The game looks easy. Nothing to it. Nothing, Nothing to, to it. it. Nothing to umpiring either, if, you, if, you, if you've noticed. No bad hops. I haven't missed a pitch up here. <laughs> I haven't done anything. Right. No bad hops up here? None. Evans None. grounded to short in the first inning. Rick Russell is on the mound for New York. Now, you've never played overweight. Doesn't he look overweight? No. That's his pitching weight. And uh, I played behind Wilbur Wood, and he had the same thing. You know, he was heavy, and uh, Rick feels that he can pitch much better at, at that weight. And when he loses it, he loses a little bit of his strength, he says. Hmm. Fly ball to left center. Mumphrey says no problem, and it isn't. With one gone in the fourth, we'll go to Jim Rice. Buck, it's all over for the year, though. Nothing nothing going the rest of the year for you, huh? I'm done. I, uh, it's disappointing because, you know, you get so close to the playoffs and the World Series, and uh, that's what you play for, and uh, you make a mistake and hit the base, and you're out for the year. It's not broke, right? It's ligaments? It tore a ligament in uh, my ring finger on my right hand, and they repaired it. Jim Rice up there now. Strike one. You play a little deeper on this guy, Buck? No, I play about right where Andre's at. This guy's scary, though, when he hits the ball. Hits the ball so hard on the ground that it's, it's unbelievable. There's certain guys that, you know, uh, they seem to hit the ball harder on the ground. Harmon Kilbrew was that way. Does it hurt more? Can you feel it in your hand? Rice hits that ball a long way, but it's a long way to the wall. Dennis Worth again handling the sun and the ball. And there are two down. So Russell takes a great big deep breath because when that ball left the bat, it looked like it might have a chance to get to the wall. Can you feel it more? Well, the ball spins more. You know, it, it doesn't hurt your hand, but it, it, it seems like it just gets on you quick. The same on the turf. But uh, Killer Brew, uh, I think I've made more errors on, on his balls than anybody else because he just, <laughs> I mean, he can hammer them. Carl Yastrzemski against Rick Russell. Shot to right, Jackson. Off the wall, Reggie will try to hold him to a single, and he will. Could he have caught that ball? I don't think so. I think he made a nice play. He made a great play on it, but remember, Carl's got that pulled hamstring. The guy. Okay, Bucky, the ball, he looks like he came up short. He was still on the grass. So, and he knew where he was position-wise. He knew right where he, where he was. He plays that wall very well. And, you know, the right fielder in Yankee Stadium has to play a little bit deeper because of the short porch out there. So that helps you, too. You don't have to go as far for the ball. Well, he knew the ball was going to hit the wall, but it didn't hit the wall. It hit at the base of the wall and then came back up. Cardi Lansford trying to go to right field. Randolph can't quite handle it, and everybody is safe. It'll be a base hit for Carney Lansford. Carney loves the swing of that first pitch. Randolph does everything right, but it hits on the heel of his glove. And when he tries to pull it in, it bounces off in his chest. Chases it down, no chance to get it. You saw right off the heel, and it bounces off his chest. And boy, that's sad, because he made that beautiful play earlier in the game. And that play, <laughs> if he made it, it would have been super. It's Jemski on first, on uh, second. And that's Carney Lansford on first. And Carney's hampered because Yaz can't run with that bad hamstring. Breaking ball to the home run hitter, Dave Stapleton, who parked one back in the second, his seventh home run of the year, and that's how many he hit last year. He played his college baseball at South Alabama for a guy named Eddie Stanky. Good man. The ball that um, Willie missed over there, he, he has a little bit of trouble going to his right over there because the field slopes. And he's always complained about that, and it does it at shortstop, too. There, there's like a crown in the middle of the field when the ball stays down a lot. At third base, Greg Nettles for the force play, and that'll do it. So two hits, single by Yastrzemski, and another by Lansford with two down, but nothing more as Russell gets out of it. And we played three and a half at Yankee Stadium. Boston won, New York nothing. 
next Saturday, rejoin the family as the tough Pittsburgh Pirates battle home run king Mike Schmidt and the Philadelphia Phillies. Or Reggie Jackson snaps out of it in style when the New York Yankees take on the Boston Red Sox. Check local listings. I think I see a lot of signatures on... I think I see a lot of signatures on the back or upper part of that Bucky Dent cast, but what's that right on the front? That looks like lipstick to me. Uh, I was going to paint a face on there. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. I got to the eyes and I chickened out. Bucky, where, uh, where is the... Uh, is it right? It's in between the uh, ring finger on the uh -huh. right hand. And uh, it tore it and they, they repaired it and they said it would come back 100%. They have a pin in the knuckle to hold in place. He didn't have to dress up for us, so, but... <laughs> well, it's hard to with this thing on. I know it. That's why I brought it up. You can't get a sport coat on, can you? No. Jerry Mumphrey, the switch hitting center fielder against Ojeda. Strike one. Hey, talk about Jerry's arm. How is Jerry's arm? He's a natural left fielder, and uh, he's doing an outstanding job in center field, but he is an outstanding hitter. Off speed. He got away with one. He hung it upstairs, and Mumphrey pops it to right, and Dwight Evans is there. One away. Ojeda has not given up a hit. The only man to reach was Pinella, who is coming to bat now, and he is not being booed. That's the old Yankee Stadium love call, the blue. This How many times have I told you, don't mention that he hasn't had a hit? Doesn't he know that, Bucky? Isn't that terrible? Lou doesn't know that. He's the most colorful player on our team, I think. Uh, he, he busts helmets, he busts water coolers, but uh, you need guys like him because he gets you going. Pinella walked in the first. All speed stuff. What about, uh, give us your scouting report on Ojeda now, Bucky. He's not an overpowering pitcher. I, I think he's got good control. He's moving his pitches around very well. And uh, a guy like this can give you a lot of problems. After two and a half in Chicago, Montreal won, Chicago nothing. Jim Fanning trying to get his first win as the manager of Montreal. Popped him up. And Rick Miller, two down. It looks like, Bucky, that he... He keeps changing speeds all the time, and he has the batters off stride. Could be that uh, first time around the league, as they say, I mean, until they really uh, get a look at this guy. Uh, what do you think? I think that you hit it right on the nose. Our club's never seen, you know, Ojeda pitch, and uh, it takes a time around. Reggie struck one. He struck out in the first. Been doing a good job the second half, Reggie, playing well. Swinging a bat well, playing good right field, and he's really hustling. He's got his months mixed up. <laughs> I think so. Mr. October is doing it in September. You said Pinella keeps you loose. How about this guy? Does he keep that clubhouse loose? He can do it. <laughs> <laughs> or does he keep a little tension out of it? Oh, no. I, Reggie's a good guy. I, uh, Reggie and I have been here. We came here together, and uh, I, I respect the man a, a great bit because he, uh, he brings people in the ballpark. Big breaking stuff. That off-speed's bothering him right now. See? <laughs> Talking about his motion. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. is. He hides the ball so well, and when it does come there, it comes all speed. And he, he, did you see how late he was with it? Two strikes to Jackson. Two down, nobody on. Bottom of the fourth. Bob Ojeda, 24 years old, out of Los Angeles and Visalia, California. Reggie's thinking about it. He just shook him off there. Does that bother you as a hitter when that pitcher shakes that catcher off? No. You don't think about it? No. Because a lot of times that catcher will give emotions just so that that pitcher will. Sometimes they do it to, to try and beat the hitter a little exactly. bit. Exactly. Could be location. He could, uh, you know, he could be changing the pitch, but a lot of times it's he wants a fastball, and a lot of times they just shake his head and still throw the fastball. But you don't let that bother you? No. Two and two. Most of the time you're looking for a certain pitch in a certain area. That's what I try to do, and I think that's what most guys do. Two balls, two strikes. Two down. The only run of the ball game coming off the bat of Dave Stableton, who slammed one into the left field seats in the second inning for his seventh home run of the year. Ojeda has faced one over the minimum, over four and two-thirds innings. Right now, he's two and two to Reggie Jackson. the second time. Six strikeouts for Bob Ojeda as he stays with the breaking stuff. And Jackson is gone and so are the Yankees. And we've played four in New York. One to nothing Boston. And we'll be back after these messages from your local station. 
This game is really moving as Rick Russell is all warmed up and ready to face the Red Sox in the fifth inning. He has given up one run and three hits. You know, we were talking earlier, there's Charlie Lau again. Bucky, why isn't Charlie Lau, why isn't Charlie Lau managing a big league ball club? Everybody recognizes his talents as a hitting coach and his value to a team. You know, Charlie's so valuable as a coach and the way he teaches players that I think it would take a little bit away from what he has to offer if he if he managed because he's a hard worker. That's Gedman and the nice play by Randolph on the grass. One out. You know, I think it would take a little bit away from him. He's a hard worker. He's out here at 4 o'clock if you want to come out and hit. And, and he's so valuable at what he does. But I think it would really hinder him a little bit if he became a manager. But shouldn't a guy be afforded that opportunity? I mean, we, we cited Bamberger before. And when somebody asked George, why at 52 are you managing for the first time? He said, nobody asked me. Oh, no. Some, some people want to manage. Uh, I don't know if Charlie really wants to manage. I would have to believe that he does. Rick Miller lined to short in the third. Ball one. Miller, second time around with the Red Sox, came into the game hitting at 302. Sounds a little tough. That's why they're wearing the <laughs> makeup, so to speak, today. After three and a half, Montreal won, Chicago nothing. Rick Russell, the ex Cub. Down low, 2 0. Through the four innings, Russia's only thrown 45 pitches and 29 of them strikes. Ojeda's, on the other hand, has thrown 54, 35 strikes. At the knees. Rick looks like he's throwing batting practice. So easy. Glenn Hoffman to follow, then Jerry Remy. Rick and his brother Paul both pitched for the Cubs at one time. Then Paul went over to the Cleveland Indians. Oh, come back early. Two down. You know, people, because of his size, think his mobility is a little bit bad, but he's an outstanding fielder. He shows it right there. Be tough to hit one through there. The guy's about 6'4". Ooh. He, he's wide enough, too. He can block that alley pretty well. <laughs> That's Hoffman. Andre Robertson to Watson. Quick one, two, three. Let's take a look at Robertson and what about this kid, Buck? He's got good hands. I saw him in spring training, very impressed. Stayed down on the ball, comes up, gets his feet up under him, and makes a nice throw. He's a threat, huh? Could be. Buck says, yeah. So we'll go to the bottom of the fifth inning. Boston won, New York nothing. Bucky Dent, the Yankee shortstop, who's on the disabled list, is with us today. There's your old roomie, Buck. We're, I've been with that guy a long time, and uh, they call him the goose, but I call him the animal. And I, I've seen him <laughs> when he uh, he goes to the mound. He is like an animal. If he gets traded, you get traded, huh? Oh, I got to go, go right with him. <laughs> Were you in the minor leagues together with the White Sox? We started together in the rookie league in 1970. We've come right along. Bob Watson. Nettles and foot against Ojeda. Popped him up. And Dwight Evans. Easy play. One out. This guy's making the game look too simple. Bob Ojeda has permitted only one man to reach. That was Fanella who walked in the first. We are now in the bottom of the fifth. And Greg Nettles who struck out of the second is the batter. How about the rivalry? Bucky, it hurts not to be in there, I know. But does it hurt a little more not to be in there against Boston? It sure does. Boston, uh, it's always a big series. And for some of the players that you know, are new to our ball club like Winfield, it's got to be exciting for them because it is a big rivalry. Brings that adrenaline out in you. Dave Winfield out with a sore shoulder right now. He doesn't miss many games. 1-0. Jerry Remy. And there are two down. So Remy picks it up for pitcher Bob Ojeda. Barry Foote to be next to fly to center field in the second inning. Do you suppose anybody knows there's a no-hitter going on out there, at least the players, Bucky? Well, I think the guys in the dugout do. Do they? Oh, yeah. What did I tell you? You're not supposed to talk. You don't talk about it in the dugout, right? 
And yes, we do, if, unless our pitcher's pitching. Well, you, if your pitcher's pitching, what happens? Nobody says a word. The little guy, the big guy was pitching last night, Dave Rigetti, uh, about two starts ago was uh, pitching a no-hitter for about six innings, and Sarone mentioned it, and he went out, and the uh, guy chinked one up the middle. Foul <laughs> <laughs> yeah. ball. No balls, two strikes. See, Sarone's not playing today, so he does, we don't have to worry about oh, he does no hitter being broken up by Sarone. Well, he's had a little problems with uh, injuries. His thumb's been sore. He's had a sore hand, and uh, I think they need to give him a day off. Two strike pitch coming to Barry Foot. Missed outside. All left handers have the natural riding fastball that's going to move away from the right handed batter. At least they, it seems like they do. Then you get a guy that really turns it over, gives you the old screwball. One ball, two strikes. I don't know why it is, but it seems like all left-handed pitchers wear their hat crooked. <laughs> I get on Rudy May all the time because I say, would you put your hat on right? <laughs> they always tilt it to the side, it seems. You know, left-handers do everything a little odd. I hope that's no indication. <laughs> <laughs> two balls, two strikes. Have you noticed when, uh, when Ojeda gets the two-strike count, then it looks like he really tries to go to a spot to nail it down. And he just barely missed. Blow it inside on that last pitch. The very foot. Took a little off. Hoffman on to Stableton. Another perfect inning for Bob Ojeda as he rolls on. He has permitted only one man to reach. That by a walk. We played five at Yankee Stadium, New York. And the tension is going to start building here because it's the Red Sox one and the Yankees nothing. It's in the high 80s in New York, but rookie Bob Ojeda is hotter than that. He has no hit the Yankees over the first five innings, and he cools off a bit in the dugout. Next week on NBC's Major League Baseball Game of the Week, perennial rivals clash as the Pittsburgh Pirates meet the world champion Philadelphia Phillies, and some of you will see another great rivalry as the Yankees meet the Red Sox at Fenway Park, so check your local listings for the game in your area. Next Saturday, 2 o'clock Eastern, right here on NBC Sports. Jerry Remy leading off for Boston. One and one. Russell has made one mistake. And Stapleton jumped on it. Hit one of the left field seats. But the game's only run. And a strike to Remy. One ball, two strikes. A little rivalry going on in the truck today. Some Yankee fans and Red Sox fans in our truck. You know that? Andy Rosenberg, our director, native of Boston. Mike Weissman, our producer, native of New York. One ball, two strikes. Let's keep the equipment. Somebody came up with a souvenir. That's all. Crowd wants something to yell about. Foul ball, anything. If Mr. Ojeda keeps going, they'll all be yelling. Bucky Dent to Bob Watson. Or rather, uh, Jerry Remy to Bob Watson. <laughs> Bucky Dent is our guest here this afternoon. Uh, Bucky with a hand in the cast, the Yankee shortstop who wants to be on the field but will watch the playoffs and everything else this year from the grandstand, I guess. Now, he's got soft hands. Everybody thinks about Watson as a great hitter. He's got very soft hands for a first baseman. Good first baseman. Picks the ball out of the dirt very well. That's important for me. <laughs> One hopper to Nettles. Easy play, and Evans is out. We're going to play this game in an hour and ten minutes, the way it's going. That's about the speed of Ruschel. He, can, he moves right along. Hits yeah. the ball and doesn't waste any time. Batting practice. Much easier for the defense, too, also. It's easier to play uh, defense behind a guy who gets the ball and throws it. Uh, you're in the game all the time, and you, you, you'll see a guy that gets the ball and moves the game along. There'll be better plays made behind him. Dennis Eckersley last night takes a tremendous amount of time, and Remy said that last night. He said, we'd much rather if speed it up a little. One strike to Jim Rice, who struck out in the first and flied to left in the fourth. And he gets side-wheeled by Rick Russell. One ball and a strike. Talk about strong. Shake hands with Jim Rice, and then you count to see if all your fingers are still there or if a couple of them have been welded together. I couldn't believe it one night. He took a check swing and snapped his bat off. That's how strong he was. Got to be an inferior bat, though. There's nobody that can get do that with it. I, just it was, their wrists. Ron Guidry was pitching, and he threw him a slider, and he checked his swing and snapped the bat off. That's that cork bat. I don't know what it was, <laughs> but I'll tell you what. 
It was impressive. Rick Russell, one two pitch to Jim Rice. Got him. Foul tip though. He's still alive as Perry Foot couldn't hold on to it. Said it before, one of the few men that I work behind as an umpire that I was scared when he fouled tipped the ball. Because the ball comes off so fast. Okay, he held on to the ball. They asked for help. The umpire came down and said, definitely held on long enough. The man is out. We've got another strikeout. Let's, let's, we got to check that one out one more time. Oh, thank goodness for the video. Look at the power through that bat. He caught it. Yes, voluntary release. Voluntary release. That's the, that's the prerequisite that you go by. And he voluntarily released the ball out of the glove hand. It went into the other, and it's still one or nothing. And you heard it from an umpire. They say you always look at the bottom line. So look at the bottom line. That's what's happening to the New York Yankees today is Bob Ojeda is just one batter over the minimum. The only man to reach was Pinella, who walked in the first, and he is now facing Dennis Wirth, the left fielder, then Andre Robertson and Willie Randolph. Bottom of the sixth inning of the Yankees are up. One to nothing, Boston. Strike one. He just keeps changing speeds. And after the second inning, he's starting to get ahead of the pitchers, which he liked a lot better. You notice he's not shaking his head as much. He is shaking off Gedman a lot, though. Look at all, how many times he's taking the signals from the catcher. No balls, two strikes. Got him on the fist. He is moving that ball all over the place. Staying ahead of the hitters, which is very, very important. No balls, two strikes. One to nothing, Boston. Bottom of the sixth. Good play by Lansford. It's still alive. Carney Lansford throws out Dennis Worth. You can feel the tension in the ballpark. When he goes down, it, it gets quiet. And he comes up and throws, and then everybody goes, ooh, darn. Mm. Because he did get him just by a half step. You saw it there. But you can really start to feel the tension in the, in the ballpark now. Strike one to Robertson, who struck out in the third inning. Here's a guy that may be after your job, Bucky. I, I, I hope not, but it looks like that way. <laughs> he's a good little player. I'm, I'm really happy for him. He's got a chance to get some experience now, and uh, he's doing a good job. He's taking advantage of it. Uh, I've tried to help him a little bit, positioning people, and uh, I think he's going to be a good little player. He needs to be a little more patient at the plate. All right, we set a 30. He's too aggressive. He strikes out too much. Like right there, he's got to look at his pitches more, don't you think? Take a few more pitches. Fly ball to left, and Jim Rice is there. Down go the glasses. Out number two. That's 15 in a row that Bob Ojeda has cut down. Remember, the only man to get aboard was Pinella, who walked in the first. You're right. He has to be a little more patient. Uh, he has to. He's the kind of guy that's going to have to get on base a lot. Take. There's a good example right here, Willie Randolph. He's got to be like him. This is Merle Harmon with Ron Luciano and Yankee shortstop Bucky Dent. We're in the bottom of the sixth inning. The Yankees at bat. They have not been able to get a base hit off this man, rookie Bob Ojeda, a 24-year-old native of California who has a one to nothing lead on a home run by Dave Stapleton in the second coming off Yankee starter Rick Russell. So it's one ball and a strike to the batter now with two down Willie Randolph as Ojeda who is after his fifth one of the year has just done a masterful job. He has retired 15 in a row now. The only man to reach to prevent this from being a perfect game today was Pinella who walked in the first inning. Fly ball to right. It's Evans near the track. And the no-hitter is still alive. Three up and three down for the Yankees in the bottom of the sixth inning as Bob Ojeda is going to start feeling the pressure as the innings wear on. So at the end of six, Boston won, Yankees nothing. So Bob Ojeda goes into that dugout with a one to nothing lead. The home run by Stapleton in the second doing it. And we'll be back. Please get high on yourself. Wink is a celebration of the human spirit. So take pride in yourself. Get high on yourself. The week starts Sunday, September 20th on NBC. Bob Ojeda, possibly on his way to glory here in New York. A win is a win, but a no-hitter is something else. And Bob Ojeda has no-hit the Yankees over the first six innings.
By the way, have either of you fellows ever been involved in a no, in a no hitter? How about you, Buck? I've never, I've never been involved in one. I've seen three close ones where it's come to down to maybe the last batter, and uh, the guy got a base hit. Here at New York or Chicago? It's two in New York and one in Chicago. Carl Yastrzemski against Russell, strike one. Yes, yeah, struck out in the second. Then he singled to right field in the fourth. How about you, Ronnie? Did you ever umpire a no-hitter? I called one behind the plate, Nolan Ryan against Detroit. And you knew from the first pitch in the first inning, the first pitch was a curveball, and it bounced off the catcher's knee. And he said, I've never seen the ball break that much. I called it a ball. <laughs> and he said, I don't care what you call it, because he's got something today that nobody else had. Uh, all right. Now, what does Ojeda have today? Is he looking like a no-hit pitcher? He is spotting, I think, his changeup, which is his big secret. If you can spot your, your off-speed pitches, it makes you triple as effective because then you don't have to be that perfect with a fastball. What do you think, Buck? I, I, I believe you're right. He's moving the ball around. He's, taking, he's changing speeds very well. We could be seeing history in the making. And in the meantime, poor Kishemski gets another strikeout. One out and nobody on in the top of the seventh inning. And Yastrzemski will be succeeded by Carney Lansford, who will face Rick Russell, who is, <laughs> he is pitching a great game. Three hits, one, mis one mistake, and Stapleton rode it into the left field seats. Here's Carney Lansford right now, who has one of the three hits. You know, Ojeda's last outing was against Detroit. And Morrison pitched one great ball game. And I talked to Hauk before the game, and Hauk says, Ojeda should have won. Our team lost it for him. He says he made one mistake, a home run, he lost two to one. He said, but Ojeda outpitched Morrison. And he's I mean doing Morris, Jack Morris. Yeah. And he he's outpitching Rick today. And Rick, like you said, Rick's been pitching a three-hitter. Two balls and a strike, one out. 62 pitches for Rick, only four, and 42 strikes. Two balls, two strikes. You know, I think Bucky made an interesting comment a little while ago about when a game is moving this quickly, the defense responds accordingly. Everybody's alert, and when everybody's making the plays, maybe we'll have a no-hitter yet. That's both clubs. Foul ball. I mean, every, you, the pace of the game for both clubs is very, very rapid. You stay in the game much better. When uh, when I played in Chicago, Wilbur Wood, Jim Codd, good guys to play behind because they moved the, they moved the ball around. They, they got the ball, they got on the mound, and they threw it. They didn't drop the rods and bag, walk around four or five times. It makes you get back on your heels. Two balls, two strikes, one out, one to nothing, Boston, seventh inning. Missed the corner. And this guy misses with a pitch. He doesn't miss that much. <laughs> You can see right there. I was very, very impressed the first time I played defense behind this guy. We call him Big Daddy. Big Daddy? He looks it, too. He's got as many chins as I have. Oh, I don't know about that. I see a couple of extras there. Hopper, short right, might be a problem. Nope, Randolph is there. Willie's one of the best second basemen I've seen going back on pop flies. He right, can cover some ground. Right there, that crown you were talking about earlier did not bother him at all. No, it's only on ground balls. The ball seems to, to stay down, and it, and it gives him a little bit of problem, and it gives me a little problem when I go to my right at shortstop. And uh, I was talking to Larry Milburn about it the other day. He asked me, what ball gives you the most problem? I said, the ball to my right. You watched the concentration on that last play. He watched that ball literally all the way into the mid. Two down, Dave Stapleton, who has supplied the only run of the ball game with his seventh homer in the second. One ball, no strikes. Let's see, he had seven last year. This is the seventh this year. That's it. No more allowed home runs for Stapleton. Two balls, no strikes. It's got to be tough for this guy playing out of position, playing another position. You know what Ralph Howe called him? Gil McDougal. Now, you're not, you're not old enough to remember, but Merle and I remember. Gil McDougal played third base short and second, and every time he played, he played, they'd say, oh, second base, that's his best position. Then he played shortstop, and then he, he's even better at short. And then he played third. That's the way with Stapleton. Very valuable guy. Fly ball to left, hooking near the foul pole to the stands. Out of play. Two balls, two strikes. Dennis Worth giving it the chase. Talk about a guy who plays all the positions. Here's a guy that does. Dennis Worth catches, plays first base, probably third. I don't know if he's played third base this year or not, but can play in the outfield for you. That's my roommate. He keeps me in stitches all the time. All right. Now you tell me what he's got all those gloves sticking out of his back pocket for. Well, he might have to go to right field. <laughs> <laughs> no, but do you really need that many batteries gloves sticking out of your back pocket? 
Looper to right, and Jackson will have to play it for a base hit and plays it for extra bases. Stapleton heading for third, and he'll be on there easily. Could have lost that ball in the shadow over there. Yeah, it's still September. It's not October, that's why. If it was October, he wouldn't miss that. So a single and a two-base error on Reggie. All right, I can see the shadows. My hand from... No, he did not get in front of the ball. He did not get in front of it. Right there, he should have taken one more step. Bounced off his side. Here's Gedman, the catcher, 0 for 2, has been robbed by Willie Randolph. A line shot that Willie pulled down and then grounded out to Randolph. One ball, no strikes. This could be a very big run right here. Two uh, down. They're going to give him a hit and uh, two, two base, base error. error. Okay. He's scoring at home and hit the two base error on that. And you're right, Bucky. This could be a very big, a very big run. Run. Uh, there's enough pressure trying to pitch the no hitter, but to try to pitch a one, a shutout against a one run game, it's even more pressure. Two balls a strike. I'm going to take the opposite side on that. Oh. Because no. maybe he'll relax a little bit if he has more than one run, and then it might cost him. That's I mean, true. just for the sake of argument. You're, no, I disagree. There's no way you can relax when you've gone six full innings with a no-hitter. You're not going to relax just because it's a two-run lead instead of a one-run lead. I disagree, but you could be right. You I haven't been all year, but you could be. I know, I'm playing defense. Boat, Buck? I know when I'm playing defense that uh, if a guy's pitching a good game and it's one to nothing, I, I try to tell myself, don't give him any more. There's the hit. There's the run. So Stapleton is home, Boston, two to nothing. And the error was very costly as Gedman drives in his 20th run of the year. Stapleton scoring from third base after a single and a two base error by Reggie Jackson. So Reggie has uh, felt the brunt of the fans here after committing that two base error, which cost a run. Buck? He's been playing really good defense, so uh, I got to give Red Reggie a lot of credit. He's uh, done an outstanding job. That ball, you know. Could have lost in the shadow. Could have took a bad hop on him. But overall, he's been playing very well since the All-Star break. Rick Miller now. Outside the ball. Now, now I know why the pitchers say they like getting <laughs> He can get base hits for you when he wants. You know, Walt Reniak, who's the batting coach for the Red Sox and a good friend of Charlie Lowes, really likes Gedman. He thinks he's going to be some hitter. I don't know. He's catching a no-hitter. Oh, great play by Watson. And what a play by Andre Robertson, the shortstop, to keep the foot on the bag to get the out. So the Red Sox get a run with two hits in Reggie's air and one left on. We go into the bottom of the seventh. Two to nothing, Boston. Now another installment of the seventh inning stretch. Spice presents. <laughs> Seventh inning stretch brought to you by Old Spice Aftershave and Cologne, the fresh, clean, masculine scent women love. Roy Campanella first turned pro at age 15 and was always overjoyed that someone would pay him to play baseball. Roy was forever burly and squat, a catcher by default. The strength of his throwing arm was no surprise, but he was also a dancer behind the plate. At the bat, Roy menaced National League pitches for 11 years. In 1953, he smacked 41 homers, the most ever by a catcher. Roy was MVP three times and bellwether of five Dodger pennants. Then in 1958, Roy was fortunate to survive a tragic car accident and has since been confined to a wheelchair. Through it all, Roy never lost his spirit. And Roy Campanella remains today, just as before, a beacon of joy and good cheer. Two good ball games going on today on NBC. Out in Chicago, Montreal leading Chicago one to nothing after five innings. And here in New York, rookie Bob Ojeda, this is what he has done. No runs, no hits, one error for New York. That error coming in the seventh inning, which cost the Yankees a run. It was unearned, but Boston has a two to nothing lead for Ojeda as he gets ready to go into the middle of the Yankee batting order. Jerry Mumphrey will lead off, followed by Lou Pinella and Reggie Jackson. Jerry Mumphrey. This is Merle Herman with Ron Luciano and Yankee shortstop Bucky Dent at Yankee Stadium, New York. The bottom line of the Yankees tells the story. Bob Ojeda, the rookie of Boston, is pitching a no-hitter against the Yankees. He is leading 2 to nothing, and leading off for New York in the bottom of the seventh. Jerry Mumphrey, then Lou Pinella, and Reggie Jackson. Pop foul out of 
play first base side. The tension has started to mount. In fact, it started back in the fifth inning with the stuff that Ojeda has displayed today. One gets the idea that he definitely could go all the way in this one and keep goose eggs on the board for New York. We've been talking about it. He's spotting every pitch he throws. He knows exactly where it's going, and he's got complete control. He's only thrown 73 pitches, 50 for strikes. Strike two at the knees. Mumphrey has struck out and flied to right field. 16 Yankees in a row have gone down at the hand of Bob Ojeda. The only man to reach was Pinella, who walked in the first inning. And most of them have been shaking their head, just like Jerry right there. Breaking ball, low and inside. Bob Ojeda is 24 years old from Los Angeles. Also has lived in Visalia, California. Last year, he came through the fact he came through the minor leagues very quickly. Strike three. That is the seventh strikeout for Ojeda. One out in the bottom of the seventh inning. Ralph Hout says that Ojeda is one of the fine prospects to come up, come up in a long, long time. He is one of many in the Boston Red Sox organization, he feels. Ojeda has won four and lost two. His earned run average for this year is 1.50, which tells you how effective he has really been. Yes, he's been very effective. He put on 20 pounds over the winter. He worked out with a Nautilus. And what it did, it beefed up his fastball. So now his great, great changeup looks even better because he spots it like he did right there, and he can zip that fastball by you. Makes his off-speed pitches much more effective. Lou Pinella, who was on base with a walk in the first, is the only Yankee to reach against this young fellow. Breaking ball going for the corner, and he missed it. It's one ball and one strike. Bucky Dent, the Yankee shortstop, is out for the year. His right hand is in the cast, and he is up here with us watching and probably feeling if I were only down there, I'd like to take a few shots at this guy. And it's two balls and a strike. Reggie Jackson is waiting to bat next. He has struck out twice today. He committed a costly error in the seventh inning. After a single by Stapleton, the ball got by Reggie. Stapleton wound up at third, scored on Getman's single. Stapleton homered in the second for the other Boston run. Foul ball, two and two. What about it, Buck? Would you like to be down there taking a shot at this guy? I would love it. I would love it. Let me ask you a question, Ron. When a guy's pitching so well like this, does the plate start to move a little bit with an umpire behind the plate? No, no. What happens, rather than the state plate starts to move, what happens is you get involved in it, and you start to call so many strikes. Like we said before, he's thrown 70-some pitches, 50 of them strikes. And that is their easy ground ball. Hoffman to Stableton, two down. The no-hitter continues, and he's got seven outs to go. And now he's going to face Reggie Jackson. And he has fanned Reggie twice, and the fans are on Reggie because of the two-base error, which set up the second Boston run of the last inning. So you get involved, but as an umpire, what happens is you start to throw strikes, you start to raise your hand almost automatic. And he's going to get a little wider plate because you're used to calling strikes. Also, we feel that tension just as much as any ball player. Just like up here in the announcer booth, the three of us have wet, sweaty palms. One ball and no strikes. Reggie Jackson has had a great second half. He was hitting 199 at the strike break. Since that time, he has upped his batting average 42 points and has become Mr. September. He has been hot. He's not waiting to lock over this year. Off the end of the bat, and it's one ball and one strike. But nevertheless, regardless of what Reggie has done here in New York, as far as playing well in the outfield or getting the key base hit, all it takes is one bobble or one boo-boo, and the crowd's right back on him again. I'm sure Reggie's aware of the mistake that he's made, and he's going to bear down. He's the guy that, uh, he's got fire in his eyes right now. One ball, one strike. Two to nothing, Boston. Bottom of the seventh. Strike two to Jackson. You saw it right there, the old enthusiasm after the pitch, that little spin he does at the end. He's really up, not only because it's Boston, not only because he had that cost error, we've got a no-hitter going. He's got everything going for him. The sweat's pouring down. You can feel it in the air. Bob Ojeda. Two down, one and two to Jackson. comes on the no hitter is still going and look at the reaction on Ojeda you think he doesn't know he's got a no hitter going that ball after it got out there seemed to hang up but when it left the bat because Reggie didn't really get that good of a cut but o 
Mojita is out of the inning, and it's one, two, three for New York. And so we played seven. Look, and look, Ojeda look. walks off the mound, knowing that his no-hitter is still alive. Oh, boy, he knows it's alive. And after full seven innings, it's two to nothing. Ojeda, no-hitter. The new world car, Ford Escort. It reflects advanced engineering. This revolutionary piston focuses the fuel charge, contributing to better gas mileage ratings than VW Rabbit, Honda Accord, Corolla Hatchback. Front wheel drive, smooth, four wheel independent suspension. Escort's the only American compact with both. Escort outsells every imported car line in America. Ford Escort, built in America to take on the world and doing it. There's this argument in football about who's smarter, the offense or defense. Defense had to be smarter to react to flip-flops and flea flickers. And we drink the best-tasting beer, light beer from Miller. We drink light, too. It's got a third less calories than the regular beer, and it's less filling. But we had to be smarter to react to the Red Dogs and close it <laughs> Okay, Billy. The flanker does it down and out, the weak side linebacker blitzes. What's the nose guard do, huh? Huh? I don't know. Defense rests. <laughs> light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. Oh, where's Pete going? For the latest national sports reports, call Dial It National Sports. Pete got the score. Sure, I called Dial It National Sports. So who won? Hey, Pete, you want to go deep-sea diving? 900-976-1313. Tomorrow, Earl Campbell proves he's no stiff, but don't underestimate this man, Brian Syke. He can hit the end zone all day. Houston versus Cleveland, what a battle. Or the New England Patriots try to ground the NFC champion Philadelphia Eagles. Check local listings. That's Bob Ojeda, who is really raising some eyebrows in New York today as Glenn Hoffman leads off for Boston in the top of the eighth inning. Ojeda has no hit the Yankees over the first seven innings. He has retired the last 19 batters. The only man to reach has been Lou Pinella, who walked in the first. That's Andre Robertson on the run, and he's out at first. One gone in the eighth inning. He did something wrong there, Bucky. What'd he do? Well, he threw the ball off balance. I thought right. he could took another step and got his feet up under him. That's where you make a lot of mistakes. Yeah, right there. Watch it now. now. Get, get yourself set. You didn't have to throw the ball off balance. That's where a young player makes a lot of mistakes. Right there. We both stood here shaking our heads saying, no, 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 don't do that. Jerry Remy, the second baseman leadoff man, 0 for 3 against Rick Russell, who has pitched a five-hitter, has given up two runs, one unearned. But when a guy is throwing a no-hitter against you, and has a couple of runs to back him up. It can be a long afternoon, noon, even though you pitch as well as Russell has pitched today. No balls, two strikes. One out. Again, Robertson. A cannon to first, two down, and that'll bring up Evans. You know, in a situation like this, I guess, you start looking at the Yankee batting order for the eighth and ninth innings. In fact, in the eighth inning, you will see Watson, Nettles, and, and Foote, and following it'll be Worth, Robertson. Could we be getting into a Dave Winfield pinch hit possibility, Bucky? You'll be looking for the big guy come out of the bench. He's just, uh, I think they're just giving him a couple days off because he had a sore shoulder, but if they need him, he'll be in there. Dwight Evans, 0 for 3, is grounded up twice. And fly to center, and there's Robertson, the busy man at short. One, two, three in the eighth inning. Three assists for the rookie shortstop. And the Red Sox go quickly and quietly in the top of the eighth inning. Now the Yankees come to bat in the bottom of the eighth without a hit. Watson, Nettles, and Foot coming up. Do-it-yourselfers, get dirty. Get gritty, grammy, greasy, slimy, dirty, dusty, dungeon, grungy. Get dirty. Real lava, you clean. Lava with pumice digs in. Powers out tough dirt. Cleaner, faster, better than any leading bar soap. So go get... Messy, musty, gloppy, sloppy, filthy, nasty, ugly, dirty. Get dirty. Real lava, you clean. Get dirty. Rubby, rubby. Real lava, you clean. Get dirty. Rubby, rubby. Real Look at my hair. It's so dirty and oily it won't bounce. So I wash it a lot. But look what can happen. Dry, flyaway hair that won't behave. So here's Pert. This one shampoo makes my hair bounce and behave. Pert works two ways. 
It cleans without stripping, then adds a touch of grease-free conditioning to make hair easy to manage. My hair's so clean it bounces, so manageable it behaves. That's Perth. No matter how often you use it, you get bouncing and behaving hair. The preceding message was furnished by Major League Baseball. Bob Ojeda on the mound for Boston, ready to go in the bottom of the eighth inning. He retired in the first, Willie Randolph and Jerry Mumphrey. Then Lou Pinella got a walk, and nobody has reached since then. As Ojeda goes sailing into the bottom of the eighth inning with a two-run lead facing Bob Watson, who is 0 for 2 today. In fact, so far, there have been a lot of Opers. <laughs> I think it's better I'm sitting up here. Oh. <laughs> Watson has flied to center and flied to right. Ooh. All one. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC television network. Merle Herman, Ron Luciano, Bucky Dead at Yankee Stadium in New York, where Boston leads the Yankees two to nothing. It's a ball and a strike count to Bob Watson with medals to follow and then foot to come up. Ojeda has cut down 19 Yankees in a row. Fastball upstairs. Two balls and a strike. That's the first batter he's gone behind since the fourth inning. You know what happens, too, in a lot of... In a situation like this, the batters start pressing because they want to get a base hit so bad that they start swinging at bad pitches. How about Ojeda? You think he's pressing? Young kid... Strike two. Welcome back to Yankee Stadium in New York. There's the story on the bottom line. The Yankee line score. Boston leading two to nothing. Bob Ojeda facing Bob Watson leading off for the Yankees in the bottom of the eighth inning. And it's two to nothing. Boston fouled out of play. Bob Ojeda, 24 years old from Los Angeles, who grew up in Visalia, California. Signed by Larry Flynn, who has a Boston connection. We'll tell you about that in a moment, but right now, Bob Ojeda is trying to do something that nobody has been able to do since the Yankee, to the Yankees since 1958, when Hoyt Wilhelm no-hit him. Fastball riding low and away. The only man to reach against Ojeda today was Pinella back in the first inning with a walk. Bob Watson, three balls, two strikes, two down. Nobody down, beg your pardon. Foul at a play, it's still three and two. Ojeda has been ahead of most of the hitters, and Ron, you commented a moment ago that Watson is the first man that he has been behind for several innings. Yes, you can watch him right here. He is just so smooth today. He's been spotting his off-speed pitches, which have helped. Look at the disgust on his face. He wanted that one. Three and two to Watson. What a, what a game. What tension. Here it is. Look at, he comes up. He's, it's a wonder he didn't throw it over the first baseman's head. One out, bottom of the eighth. Greg Nettles has struck out and grounded out. 14 home runs for Nettles. Ball one. Five outs to go for Bob Ojeda. And a tough five outs. Looking at Barry Foote scheduled to bat next. Dennis Worth, Andre Robertson, Willie Randolph. And sitting in the dugout, a guy named Dave Winfield, who's not in the lineup today, but could be called upon. Two balls, no strikes. Here's a guy right here that in the late innings. If you need a long ball, this is a guy I want, Greg Nettle. I've seen him win more ball games, more big games for the Yankees in the late innings with home runs. 
The voice of Bucky Dent, the Yankee shortstop, whose right hand is in the cast. He'll be out for the year. He's joined us in the booth here, watching a very dramatic moment. Bottom of the eighth, one out, two to nothing, Boston. Ball three. Ojeda slowing down just a little bit. He had been working very quickly. 94 pitches. He might be getting a little tired. What do you think, Buck? Have you seen a change this inning? He could be getting a little tired. He's been behind him on the last two hitters. Could be pressing. He wasn't fooling around there. He threw that right down the middle. Crosshairs. Last week, Ron and I were in Montreal where Nolan Ryan bid for a no-hitter against the Expos. Didn't make it. The same weekend, Jim Slayton had a perfect game into the ninth inning in Minnesota for the Milwaukee Brewers and didn't make it. Popped him up. Playable. Jerry Remy, the second baseman, calling with Stapleton. And Stapleton takes it. Two down. He's four outs away. Infielder's legs start to get a little shaky now. <laughs> Bob Ojeda, leading two to nothing, has retired the last 21 batters in a row. The only man to reach was Lou Pinella, who walked in the first inning, and here's Barry Foote with two down. Barry Foote started the day hitting .087, and he's still in there. Would have been a good spot for Winfield, maybe. Ball one. I don't think so. Not right now. I think you want to wait maybe if they get one guy on in the next inning, they'll... Uh, yeah, but you day. got Randolph, Mumphrey, Pinella, and Jackson coming up. One ball and no strikes. Barry Foote against Ojeda. And he wants to think about it a little bit. I forgot about your famous guy, Andre Robertson. That's right. Ralph Hawk, the manager of the Red Sox, really likes this kid. He pitched very well his last time out. His ERA is under two. Two balls, no strikes. Now he has gone behind the last two hitters. Two balls, no strikes. And it looks as though Ojeda is struggling here now. Bottom of the eighth inning with two down. Two balls, no strikes to Barry Foot. To pitch a no-hitter, you not only have to be good, you have to be terribly lucky. Foul ball, two balls and a strike. He was lucky. He popped up Nettles. He was behind on Watson, and he got him. He went behind on Barry Foot. now. Can he get him? You've got to be lucky to pitch a no-hitter. Can the luck hold out? Two balls, a strike. Two down. Strike two at the knees. Carney Lansford had a fine fielding play at third base to keep the no-hitter going. But other than that, it's been Ojeda. Carney had the only tough play. He's ready, just in case. Two balls, two strikes. Fly ball to right. That's Evans. Three outs to go for Ojeda. He's got a no-hitter going into the ninth inning and leading by a score of two to nothing. This 24-year-old youngster was signed out of, as a free agent out of the College of Sequoia in California in 1978. There's the story. Is Gillette Foamy thick and rich enough to restrain this rushing roller coaster? No. Is Foamy thick and rich enough to support this lovely lady? No. Is Foamy thick and rich enough to hold up this husky hiker? <laughs> no. But if you want a clean, close shave, it's more than thick and rich enough. We asked Roger Staubach to find out how people spell relief. How do you spell relief? For acid indigestion, R-O-L-A-I-D-S. For heartburn, R-O-L-A-I-D-S. Rolaids really does spell relief. Like a sponge, Rolaids antacid medicine consumes 100% of the acid required to give millions 100% relief. How do you spell relief? I spell relief R-O-L-A-I-D-S. For millions of Americans, Rolaids spells 100% relief. Summer's gone, and guess who's just around the corner? But before old man winter's fuel bills get you, it's Think Pink time. Just enough time for you to get Owens Corning fiberglass insulation and add an extra money-saving layer to your attic. 
Think Pink time is now. Get your Pink Owens Corning today. Industry experts and fans alike consider it the most respected football show on the air today. For humor, for controversy, for an inside look, join host Brian Gumbel for all the latest scores, highlights, and more. NFL 81, it's as hard-hitting as the sport it covers. Tomorrow, join host Bryant Gumbel at 12.30 Eastern Time for NFL 81. All the scores, highlights, and late-breaking news from all the games. It's a doubleheader Sunday featuring a tough AFC Central battle as the Houston Oilers meet the Cleveland Browns. Check your local listings for the games in your area following NFL 81 at 12.30 Eastern Time. Ninth inning, Jim Rice, 0 for 3. Rick Russell has pitched well enough to win a ball game. There's the battery. Gedman and Ojeda for Boston. Nettles across the infield to get Rice one out. The ever steady glove of Greg Nettles. He not only has the no hitter going, but he also has uh, a little luck in that shadow at home plate, also. Good point, Bucky Dent. What about this guy? 42? He's got three brothers. He's got three brothers. He, they switch off. Base hit to left center. That's the younger brother. Just hit that one. Yeah, he's going to try it for two. Oh. Willie Randolph taking the throw. Close play. The heart is there, but the wheels are not. Dennis Worth making a throw right on the button. The cutoff man let it go through, and he just got down in time. He was going all the way. He's not 42. Perfect slide. That's even closer than I saw the first time. Two down. Ninth inning. Two to nothing, Boston. Fly ball to short right center. That may drop. So Lansford is two for four now. Carney has two of the seven hits given up by Rick Russell. Bob Ojeda sitting in the dugout. A little while ago, nobody was around him. Then finally, Rich Gedman came over to sit by him. A little superstition. <laughs> I didn't know baseball players were superstitious, Bucky. Are you kidding? The other <laughs> night they were going to put me in operating room 13. I said, there ain't no way I'm going in there. <laughs> Stapleton is homered, and he has scored the other run. Bouncing ball to Russell, runner at first going, still got him. So Lansford started with a pitch, Stapleton bounces out, pitcher to first, and it's no runs and two hits, and we're headed for the bottom of the ninth inning, and Bob Ojeda is getting ready to go out to the mound to see if he can throw the first no-hitter against the New York Yankees since 1958. Here he is. He'll face Worth, Robertson, and Randolph if they hit in the bottom of the ninth. Proves he's no stiff, but don't underestimate this man, Brian Sype. He can hit the end zone all day. Houston versus Cleveland, what a battle. Or the New England Patriots try to ground the NFC champion, Philadelphia Eagles. Check local listings. Bob Ojeda, three Check local listings. Bob Ojeda, three outs away from a no-hitter in the bottom of the ninth inning. The Yankee fans are standing over for him in the bottom of the ninth. Merle Herman, Bucky Dent, Ron Luciano at Yankee Stadium in New York where Bob Ojeda has three outs to go. He has retired 22 Yankees in a row, has not given up a hit. And Rick Cerrone is batting for Dennis Worth in the bottom of the ninth inning. Ojeda, who is behind to the eighth, is behind to the ninth of the first hitter. One ball and no strikes. The Red Sox... Got a run in the second and a home run by Stapleton. They got an unearned run in the seventh. Rick Russell has pitched well enough to win, but Ojeda is firing an O-hitter, and the crowd is with him now. He's behind two balls, no strikes. The part of the crowd is with him, part of the crowd, hoping the Yankees can break it up. They want to win. Dave Winfield has come out of the dugout. He'll be batting for Andre Robertson. Two balls, no strikes to Cerrone. It's really nice to see the fans get behind them. They, they know what's happening, and uh, the New York people, they're, they're good baseball fans. Strike one. Two balls and a strike. 
Rick Saron, bruised left hand, can still swing the bat. Batting for Dennis Worth. Drive to right field. Can Evans get it? He cannot. There goes the no hitter. Saron is on his way to second. And he is in there with a standing double. going through the mind of Bob Ojeda as he watched Evans try to get this ball. Just missed it. Great play. Great try. The no-hitter goes in the bottom of the ninth inning. You think he did not know about the no-hitter and hoping, 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 and Evans couldn't quite reach it. So a bit of history in the life of Bob Ojeda. Now the story becomes win the ball game. Dwight Evans gave it a great shot. He's a tremendous defensive outfielder. He just couldn't quite reach it. That's the first hit of Ojeda who's got a 2 to nothing lead. And Winfield comes up as a pinch hitter and there's the story in New York. So two runs, seven hits, no errors for the Red Sox. No runs, one hit, one error for the Yankees. And Bob Ojeda now has to concentrate Bucky on winning the ball game. I just saw Ralph Howe come out of the dugout. It looked like he was going out to take him out, but uh, I think that you can't make two trips to the same batter. So Dave Winfield with 57 runs batted in, one of the leaders in the American League, has a sore shoulder. That's why he did not start today. Two to nothing, Boston. Ball one. Dave Winfield misses very few games. This is what he has done with men in scoring position. 352. And he's got one in scoring position now. Rick Cerrone at second with a leadoff double to break up the no-hitter. Just missed by Dwight Evans in right field. That ball that Cerrone hit. and he got it in there for a strike. It's one and one. He's battling him. You wonder how a guy can get back up when he was so aware of the no-hitter. You saw his reaction when the ball went by Evans' glove in right field. This is where it becomes tough for Ralph out to. Do you leave him in or, you do, or do you go and get him? One ball and a strike. Him foul, one and two. Last night, Bucky, we saw Dave Rigetti pitching so well with 11 strikeouts, and Bob Lemon, as we look at Ralph Hawk's study, the batting order with pitching coach Lee Stang, we saw Bob Lemon take Rigetti out of the game. He took him out. He said last night that when a guy pitches that well, you never give him a chance to lose the ball game. One ball, two strikes. Especially when you have a guy like the animal in the bullpen, Rich Gossett. Last half of the ninth inning, Boston 2, New York nothing. Fouled it out of play as Winfield was trying to go to right field. I saw Nolan Ryan, same thing happened to him. He was pitching a no-hitter for about eight and two-thirds against the White Sox when I was when I was a rookie over there, and uh, he got he gave up a base hit and then he wound up losing the ball game two to one. Well, I'm sure that Ralph Hauck He's got a tough decision here. He wants to go with him to build the confidence or keep the confidence, and yet he wants to win the ball game, too. I think if he loses Winfield, he'll take him out. One ball, two strikes. Breaking ball, right to left field. That'll bring in a run. Saron is on his way home. Winfield, tying run, heading for second. He's in there.
back-to-back -back doubles. Saron and Winfield, two to one. Boston leading. Ralph Hawk is at the mound. And the Yankee fans, no doubt, will give as we see the pitching change being made. Mark Clear is coming out of the Boston bullpen. I'm sure the Yankee fans, who are some of the finest, will recognize the tremendous job that Bob Ojeda, the rookie from Los Angeles and Visalia, California, will recognize the job he has done. No doubt, heartbroken, and yet he wants that win because it's not only something that's very personal to him, a win is a win, but the Red Sox need a win. They're still in this race in the Eastern Division. Plus to beat the Yankees. It's always there. Ojeda, eight innings plus, 112 pitches, 74 strikes. Here's the ovation for Ojeda. Willie Randolph at the plate against Mark Clear, bottom of the ninth, tying run at second, and it's ball one outside. Mark Clear, 25 years old from Los Angeles. They say about Clear, he does with a curve what Gossage does with a fastball. He's the best in the Boston bullpen. Eight and one for the year. Ralph Houck has removed Bob Ojeda, going for the win. Willie Randolph needs to move the runner to third. Let's see what he does. Ball, one ball and a strike. Last half of the ninth inning. Nobody out. Rick Cerrone, who pinch hit for Worth, broke up the no hitter, double to right field. Dave Winfield batting for Robertson, double to left field to get the run in. He's at second base with Willie Randolph at the plate. Boston leading by a score of two to one. Tough spot for Willie right here. He's got to move that runner over. He's got to give Muffrey a chance to drive the tying run in. This isn't, a, this isn't a very easy guy to do it against, too, because he got that real good curveball, and he throws hard. One ball, one strike. Foul ball. Now, does he try to go to right field, inside out, or whatever he has to do? He's got to try to hit the ball on the ground to the right side now. He's got to give himself up. If you were clear, how would you pitch him in this situation? If you were the batter, what would you be looking for? He, if I was a pitcher, I'd try to I'd try to jam him. I wouldn't want him to hit the ball to the right side of the diamond. Can he go inside out? How well does he do it? Well, he's a very good inside out hitter. He can hit the ball over there. But against clear, it's a little tough because he has a good breaking ball and he has that hard riding fastball. One ball, two strikes, nobody out. Winfield tying run at second. Bottom of the ninth. Two to one, Boston. Strike three. Squared to butt, took the pitch. Don Dickinger, the plate umpire, punched it out, and Willie doesn't think so. Looked like a pretty tough pitch. Good pitch. That's how close it was. It looked like it might not have been in the strike zone, but it looked like he gave him that one. But you can't take a pitch that close either, huh? No, you can't, especially with a guy in scoring position and one run down. Really handles the bat very well, though. One out. And the batter, Jerry Mumphrey, the switch hitter, who goes around to hit from the other side. As a right-handed batter, 0 for 3, two strikeouts against Ojeda. Ojeda, in eight-plus innings, allowed one run, two hits, walked one, and struck out six. Mark Clear in relief, one-time California Angel. Ball outside, one ball a strike. The Yankees have won, well, you see, 29 out of 35 going into the Red Sox, rather, 29 out of 35 uh, going into the seventh inning. The Yankees have won a ton with a lead in the seventh. One ball, two strikes. Good breaking ball. Bob Lemon. It would appear is going to pinch it for Pinello. One ball and two strikes. Got him with a heater. So Claire has fanned the first two batters. And now Oscar Gamble will be coming out of the Yankee dugout as Mumphrey goes back in.
Gamble with two down, tying run at second, bottom of the ninth inning. The Red Sox scored in the second of the home run by Stapleton. They scored an unearned run in the seventh, made it two to nothing. They went into the bottom of the ninth inning with Bob Ojeda throwing a no-hitter at the Yankees. Pinch hitters Rick Cerrone and Dave Winfield doubled, and then came clear to fan Randolph and Mumphrey and try to save this game for Ojeda. Breaking ball, bit high. You know, Bucky, uh, the story started to tell in the eighth inning when Ojeda threw 18 pitches, which was the most since the first. He gave up tw or threw 20 pitches in the first inning, having walked uh, Pinella. A strike with a good breaking stuff. But then he was ahead of everybody until it looked like he started to tire. In the late innings, he looked like he started to tire, started to miss a little bit with his uh, fastball. And uh, it's one of those things. It's, it's very tough. He pitched a great game, and now we just... Uh, He's sitting in that dugout hoping that Clear can save it for him. One ball, one strike. Foul out of play. One ball, two strikes, two down. Gamble in a pitch hitting roll. Batting for Pinella. This could be it. Miss load inside. Ball two and strike two. Last half of the ninth inning. Boston two, New York one. Dave Winfield, potential tying run at second. Breaks a little tension or adds to it. I'm not sure which. Well, I know Oscar's stepping out thinking I've got to just put the ball in play now. Two balls, two strikes. Three and two. If, if Gamble gets aboard, guess who's coming up next? Reggie. And this is the situation that he actually loved. Reggie today, 0 for 3, two strikeouts, a costly error in the seventh inning, which permitted or set up the second Boston run, which right now is the margin, 2 to 1. Bob Lemon never changes expression over in that dugout. Never gets excited. 3 and 2. With the no-hitter going in the ninth inning, right now the Red Sox are on the ropes trying to save a win for Bob Ojeda. Fly ball to left. Rice with the glasses down. Tough son, but he's got it. The Red Sox win it 2-1. to one. Show this crowd at Yankee Stadium this afternoon seeing all kinds of excitement as Bob Ojeda, the rookie left-hander, no-hit the Yankees over the first eight innings, gave up two doubles in the ninth, then Mark Clare came out of the bullpen to save it for him, and Boston evens this series. The Red Sox win this one by a score of 2-1, to one, and we'll be back from Yankee Stadium in New York, where the action has been today, right after this message. Show in the air today for humor, for controversy, for an inside look. Join host Brian Gumbel for all the latest scores, highlights, and more. We've got it all. Don't miss the most incredible upsets. Action off the field, the wildest fans, some down-home music, players turned actors, and the battle of the big boys. NFL 81. It's as hard-hitting as the sport it covers. There's the line score. Two runs, seven hits, no errors. Boston Yankees, one, two, and one. And Ron Luciano is down in the dugout. Ronnie? Merle, one of the 
Murrow, one of the greatest things ever. Ojeda came off, and I, tears coming out of his eyes as he came off the ball uh, field. He walked into the dugout, took his glove, threw it against it, and said, I tried, down the stairs and in, and he's got ice on his arm right now, and he's in the dressing room. I tried. Can you believe it? Back up to you, Merle. All right, Ronnie, well, Bucky Dent, uh, I know you would like to have been in a ball game like this one today. It would have been a great time. It was a great pitch game by uh, Ojeda, and uh, Rick Bruscio, got to give him a lot of credit. He pitched an outstanding ball game. He lost a tough one, two to one. So he is the winner. He is five and two, clear with a save. Rick Russell, the loser, he is three and two. Ojeda had a no hitter going into the bottom of the ninth inning, but he just couldn't quite nail it down. I'm Merle Herman with Ron Luciano and Bucky Dent in New York at NBC Baseball's Game of the Week. Has been brought to you by Pert, the shampoo for bouncing and behaving hair. By Lowenbrow. When you want the taste of a truly great beer, there's only one. Tonight, let it be Lowenbrow. By Dutch Masters Cigars. They really are masters of Dutch Masters. And by Ford and your Ford dealers who invite you to test drive the new world car, Ford Escort. The executive producer of NBC Sports is Don Olmeyer. The coordinating producer and producer of today's telecast, Michael Weissman. Directed by Andy Rosenberg. Technical director, Skip Dresch. Associate director, John Libretto. Next Saturday, baseball continues with the New York Yankees in Boston or Pittsburgh and Philadelphia. Check your local listings. Tomorrow, an NFL doubleheader with NFL 81 at 12.30 Eastern time right here on NBC, the innovative leader in sports television. A promotional fee has been paid to NBC by United Airlines. United serves more of this land than any other